Well, the good news is that uh, recognition of innovative teaching learning of which MOOCs do form a very comprehensive component are very openly being recognized. In fact, that is being encouraged. That is good news. I had a chat with uh, Professor Pant, the acting chairman of AICT, who also said that AICT is actually formulating exactly similar opinion, but I do not know whether they have any circulated the notification. In any case, as I said, we are recognized as autonomous institutions by the country precisely because the nation expects that we take our own decisions and implement them. And as long as we do that in the interest of furthering the quality of education, uh, that would be very fine. We now come back to the major issues and possible redress. Some issues were mentioned by uh, participants in the initial discussion. This is the second round of discussion where we will also try to concentrate and arrive at specific solutions, at least to begin with, what should we do in the first year of our operations uh, to redress any issues that we face. We would like to consider specifically, not the generic issues, but very special issues. Ah, I, I, I'm sorry, I will just take a small uh, diversion. Uh, remember, there was a mention that people wanted additional courses, etc., to be offered. Uh, I have started discussing this with the other colleague teachers who have been involved again in our T10KT program and others. And one of them who has agreed to uh, create and offer a MOOCs uh, next year on environmental sciences, which is now becoming an important, uh, I believe, an obligatory element in our coursework. Uh, so, Professor Viren Sethi is here. Viren, can you just say hello to them? Yeah. As we speak, he is currently running a T10KT workshop on environmental science. In fact, today afternoon, immediately after uh, visit to the MOOCs labs on the other side, we will have an opportunity to spend about 15-20 minutes in looking at how the T10KT workshops are conducted. Uh, there is a live session, I mean interactive session planned today. I think Professor Parsarthi is doing that in the afternoon at 2.30. So, we will be going there and observing. But uh, Professor Viren said he has agreed uh, to create a MOOCs course based on the ES200 and HS200 course that is given in IIT Bombay. And uh, you might keep this in mind in your in own institutions if there are such courses on environmental science which are, I believe, required to be compulsory part of the course, then we might benefit even from that. I will briefly read the uh, main points that I had written here as to forming issues that might be of our concern. One is the schedule of the MOOC, because the MOOC is typically run as six to eight week course, whereas our courses run for a full semester. Second was the use of flipped classroom with pedagogy inputs. I think Professor Sridhar here has already mentioned we had some discussions. And I will tell you that there must be some teachers in your colleges also which have started practicing this. But this must become the full-fledged teaching learning method in coming years. There is no doubt in the minds of most senior educationists in the world. US is much ahead in practicing this. In fact, there are many institutions in the US who are very quickly changing the furniture layout in the classroom. They have recognized that that is a major bottleneck and hindrance in group discussion. So, they are all working on the round table kind of thing where 12, 20 students will sit there. there are some institutions which have actually put the projector not in the front, but in four walls, so that anybody sitting in any orientation will be able to see any common discourse that is going on. The third, again, which I had briefly mentioned that we will have fortnightly discussion sessions for T10KT workshops. T10KT workshop for the participating teachers to qualify to get an IST recognized certificate 
for attending that workshop requires that that workshop be of two weeks duration. We have already modified that to say that one week equivalent work can be done by online mechanisms and one week can be face to face. This we have done it already. Here we are actually saying that this is a face to face workshop but the two week equivalent will be covered over four months or five months or the entire duration. There was a thinking that some institutions might want to supervise online MOOCs examination. That way it will give additional credibility to their recognition of marks of those quizzes and exams. If they have to do that, how can that be facilitated? Because MOOCs have to run as per a fixed schedule. So this answer to this will overlap with answer of the schedule of the MOOC courses and examination. And finally, how do we choose weightage to be allocated to the MOOC scores in our own grade for the course? There are other issues, some of which are equally important. For example, in a conventional course, there is a re-exam. Now, what happens if my college has decided a certain percentage of MOOCs and the student is failing in an overall course, although he's passing in my own internal weightage? but failing because of MOOCs. Now, does that student stand fail? Does he have to repeat the course? Ordinarily, there is a re-exam. Our own thinking currently is that for MOOCs, conducting a re-exam is not difficult at all because it is an online re-exam. And it can be conducted even within one week of the main exam, even within 24 hours of the main exam, because the question paper can be kept ready, predetermined, predefined. But whether the institutions participating in this endeavor will need such a re-exam for the subjects that are taught as MOOCs is a question that I would like to be deliberated later. There is some information exchange logistics that is uh, what you call uh, uh, during the blended MOOCs what information has to be sent by the MOOCs operating institute which is in this case happens to be IIT Bombay and what is the information that is to be given by the participating institution. We have to clearly outline. Last and not the least, the long term continuity and financial viability of this effort. When this effort becomes mainstream, currently we charge fees to our students uh, for meeting part of our expenses. In fact, as Professor Sukhat may famously told us many years ago when he was our director, that ordinarily a tier one institutions anywhere will have three components of revenue. One will be fees, the other will be government support or support primarily for R&D and other projects. And the third would be the philanthropic support or the generated revenue by the institution in other associated ways. It could be contributions and donations from alumni. It could be uh, continuing education programs. It could be con uh, consultancy services, whatever, whatever. Now, this is a part of teaching learning exercise. So therefore, this should be part and parcel of our teaching expenditure and therefore learning fees or something. One of the issues is that when we run MOOCs, operating a MOOCs, when it is the cost is defrayed over large number of participants, per participant cost is not much. Quite independent of this endeavor, when we were looking at long term sustenance, in fact at that time Professor Pradeep Parma used to be our advisor and not NBA advisor, uh, we had worked out multiple uh, schemes and uh, the proposals that we had given to the government, we had stated as follows. that the fees to be charged to a student for attending MOOCs, for learning from MOOCs, for interacting and benefiting with a honor course certificate from MOOCs and for getting a certificate which is recognized as credit from MOOCs. So, we had identified three different situations. In the first situation we had stated that if students just want to audit a MOOC, it should be completely free. In fact, IIT Bombay has gone ahead and said that all content will always be free and will be released in open source. If students wish to benefit from the interaction which is available through discussion forums 
and wish to obtain an honor code certificate which means there is no supervised exam but they declare that they have not cheated and such a certificate which requires some extra work by the MOOCs organizer for interaction and such thing there shall be some charge we had estimated that such charge should be somewhere between rupees 300 to 500 per student per course the third is where the MOOCs certificate is recognized as a credit certificate for a particular program of any university or college. We have said that that amounts to recognition of credits formally by a university or an equivalent body for which normally students pay fees and therefore students will have to pay fees to such a program. We had estimated that such fees should be between 1500 to 3500 rupees per student per course. This is what we had actually submitted to the government also as recommended numbers. These are not as arbitrary as they seem. We had worked out on the basis of maintaining the economic viability of running MOOCs. At that time, blended MOOCs was not uh, under consideration. But suppose I have to run a MOOCs program, I have to set up huge amount of hardware, I have to set up complete software and I have to maintain that software. And then I have to have teams of teachers who will consistently not only prepare a MOOC, designing a MOOC is a one-time activity, but run a MOOC. And as I said, running a course involves a lot of work. So how do you ensure that the cost of doing all that is met? We have said that there will be some courses which will be taken by lakhs of students, there will be some courses which may be taken by 5-10,000 students, there will be some courses which may be taken by fewer students. So some kind of an intrinsic class subsidiary will work on this mechanism. We had also said that although IIT Bombay might initiate these activities, eventually this should be run by a Section 8 company, which will run the entire software operations independently, which will interact with the teachers who design MOOCs, courses, etc., and will uh, encourage them to run these MOOCs. Such a Section 8 company, which is an independent, not-for-profit company, will be advised by a consortium of universities which are participating. Now that proposal has been approved but the funding has not yet started. We are trying to use the opportunity of these blended MOOCs to put in place some of those companies. So initially the funding for these blended MOOCs will work this way. You bear your costs, I bear my costs. That's the easiest way to do things. That means IIT Bombay which is offering MOOCs will not charge any participating institute, any student, any money for participating in this area. It is being offered free for two reasons. A, IIT Bombay does have both the mandate and some funds from MHRD to run the MOOCs activity. And we have informed the ministry and the mission that we are launching this blended MOOCs program. B, IIT Bombay independently has worked out a modality and has approved offering of MOOCs under what we call our extended educational programs. There is a formal committee which recommended and the board has approved offering of MOOCs in this. And the Center for Distance Engineering Education Program is the operational authority. So head CD is authorized from IIT Bombay to issue honor code IIT Bombay certificates to all participants and is authorized to participate in all such blended MOOCs programs from IIT Bombay's behalf. So we have no problems on that. As far as your institutes are concerned, as I mentioned, for the first year, in this experiment, we do not expect uh, any extra expenditure to be incurred by these institutions for availing of the MOOC services, but they will have to put extra resources within their own institutions, primarily in the form of providing support to teachers of the courses who teach these courses. They will probably require teaching assistants, maybe in slightly larger numbers, probably they will require more associate teachers uh, to spend probably more time on these activities and they will certainly require encouragement and support from the leadership and regular monitoring. Now this does not cost money but this costs effort and I would expect participating institutions to be at this. In addition there could be meetings that may have to happen. It will all depend upon how the advisory committee of the consortium advises us. 
but i would expect that somewhere midway through the first semester we should have a get together of this kind for which we should collect inputs from the teachers who are by then participating in this now this particular workshop we could organize using the funds that are given to us by mission so far uh, let me tell you how hard it is for us i had frankly budgeted for this get together assuming about 5 to 10 people will come with 52 people the money that i am spending on this workshop actually means that i cannot pay salary for five software professionals who are desperately required to take this task to complete and these are the hard part so we will follow the american and european model of conferences everybody spends money for one's own cost of travel stay everything the institute which organizes this meeting and i would strongly suggest that one of the consortium members should come forward to organize this meeting which we might want to schedule somewhere around october november time frame to take a stock that institution will have to bear the expenses of conducting that workshop but that institution should definitely charge some money because they are not getting funded from anywhere maybe it could be 1000 rupees 2000 rupees whatever whatever is they require for making local arrangements so we will run it like a international research conference run but we will call it a consultation conclave of participating institutions from this is that okay with you because uh, well, and this is not an interaction between participating teachers by the way that will happen through t10kt workshop regularly through avu interaction and so on and we will plan one of these sessions on these interactions for each of these three subjects where the corresponding dean or the director or somebody can also sit and participate in that interaction as far as subject specific interaction but this is the institute level interaction now what i would like to know is for each of the items that i have listed we need to take concrete decisions for operational reasons so that we can start operating from this semester i had asked my team to circulate the survey feedback that we have received from participating institutions all of you have that i suppose some important questions which you had asked was when does the first semester start and end when does the third and fifth semester start and end etc etc by and large we are lucky that most semesters start in july some start in august however we did not have enough granularity july could mean 1st of july could mean 27th of july august could mean 1st of august could mean 31st of august there is a problem of some kind end of the semester when we say november or december the dates could become important now i believe that your respective institutions would have already declared the timetable for the next semester except for those institutions which are affiliated to universities and universities declare the timetable but in such cases i believe the universities would also have declared the time table the biggest problem that i have seen in this country is the beginning of the first year first semester where that depends upon admissions and many times it goes haywire court cases whatever whatever we'll keep our fingers crossed for that however what i suggest for the operations of the mooks schedule will be that the mooks course will begin one week ahead of the first beginning of that semester where the course is offered in your institution so we'll require those dates specific dates from each of the participating institutions once they decide which of the three subjects they are going to consider if they consider all three subjects they must tell us for each subject what is the start date exact start date we will take the earliest start date of that and we'll launch the course definitely by that date if not earlier when should the mooks course end the mooks course will end at least on the last day of the latest closure of that particular subject teaching in any institution so it require the last date of the course also from 
I would strongly suggest that since MOOCs are going to run independently, it is perfectly all right for the MOOCs course to end even before your normal course end. In fact, since the blended MOOC uh, thing envisages flipped classroom discussion, it will be meaningful if the MOOCs course ends with the closure of the instructions in your respective institution rather than wait for the complete closure of the exam and so on. One advantage will be if we agree to that, that you may tell us what is the last day of instruction in your institution and we will ensure that the MOOCs course will end around that time or one week later. Typically all the three subjects have an end same exam or end examination for each of the MOOC subjects. That end examination can be run within one week of the closure of the last instruction interaction so that most students will be able to benefit from that online course once they will know what their score is and they will benefit from that practice for attempting your own normal end same exam in your own place. So is this okay with you? that we start the course the earliest day of the first institution starting semester for that subject and we'll end the course on the last day when the instructions for that subject end in our institutions taking the last institution to end that institution. Since there will be an overlap there will be a period for which all students may not be here and there will be a period for which all students may not be there. We consider running of the quizzes not across the entire spectrum of four months, but put them together such that students of all colleges have joined the course and they have spent at least one week doing the course. So till such time we will not conduct any quiz, any graded quiz where marks are to be considered for any student. This may mean that we might have to bunch some quizzes for some topics Ordinarily in all our institutions, if at all we are conducting quizzes, we conduct them immediately after completion of the discussion of that topic. Here there will be some bunching. Of course, the portions uh, which are uh, being taught, they will be evaluated and assessed even on MOOCs. At the most within two weeks, I believe, because the overlap is of that kind. So is that acceptable if we take that decision that the MOOCs course will run in this fashion and it will conduct most of the quizzes if there are assessed graded quizzes for which you might want to take those marks at the end, those quizzes will be executed during the middle portion of that entire thing. Means it will start not in the first month, probably somewhere in the second month and it will continue up to the fourth month or something of running of the MOOC. Is that, is that okay for conduct? Yeah. Okay, because so all the all MOOC, the participating MOOC, institute will have a same session of the not quiz. Not just participating institute. Please understand that the same MOOC is also offered to global learners in the country. Okay. So there is a student from Jarsuguda who is actually doing a course in that Jarsuguda institute is also learning the course. Yes, sir. There is some professional 50 years old who is also learning the course. Okay, sir. We are not going to run a separate course for them. So there will be pre-schedule of that session. <laughs> the schedule will be announced for the entire course. course okay. The liberty I am taking is that for those one lakh learners who want to learn each of these subjects, I am actually forcing a schedule on them which is decided as is found beneficial for the blended MOOC experiment. <coughs> eight week, yeah. That eight week will be common for Correct. So what Dr. Mugera is saying is that per week assessment which is graded, may not be very conducive. So can we, just like we have a mid-same examination, <coughs> can we consider three to four assessments during the entire semester? No, no, no. So forget the week. But uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Mugera, you mentioned every three weeks an assessment kind of thing. Yeah. So suppose we agree that for a blended MOOCs exam, there should be four graded assessments. Four graded assessments. It can be scattered roughly every three weeks or so or two weeks it may be if I bunch them. But there is, shall be only four graded assessments. Now what we will do is I will request my colleague teachers who have actually decided to create graded assessment for every week for the normal course. What I will tell them is keep the assessment every week if you want but don't call it graded assessment. These are practice problems. The students can attempt them at any time. 
they will get to see the marks they will get to see their performance these are not counted even towards the honor code certificate or whatever this is just additional practice for them mock. yeah mock mock these we do any which way but we will enhance that so we agree that there shall be four assessments for this particular thing uh, for every subject that we teach and in addition there shall be an end examination this end examination has again nothing to do with your own, own end semester examination but this end examination will be given to all participants of blended mooks and others this score plus the four assessments to score plus any other submission that we might decide which is subject specific for example for computer programming course all of us believe that some actual programming assignments have to be given and marks have to be given since we have an auto grader we use that we typically keep two graded programming assignments where people have to submit actual programs these will be part of that mooks thing whether to take that into account for your uh, internal grading or not that's a separate but the major decision we take is that there shall be four assignments uh, four graded quizzes let me put it this way four graded quizzes uh, during this execution all mooks exams all mooks activities are online there is absolutely nothing which is offline that is what mooks is all about all exams are only either multiple choice short answers or this i would i would strongly recommend that iit bombay x dot in which is the website of this i would strongly recommend even my senior colleagues here to actually register for that and just enroll for a demo course that demo course which is based on the open edx demo course but which we have prepared clearly explains what different types of quizzes can be constructed so that will also tell you what the students will see everything is completely on the second part is in first year this computer programming will be in first year hmm. say some students uh, uh, if our course starts on 1st of august ha huh. first year some students join late also hmm. so, so suppose some students joins on 15th of august huh. so will they get an opportunity to join this course yeah yeah of course of course we presume that in fact in our blended mooks operations we have assumed that there could be a student who may be permitted by the institution to join even one month later okay we have absolutely no problem because now, first year only we have correct. this problem now what do you do in such cases is that suppose a student joins late either you give that student an extra assignment or you evaluate the student on the basis of the few assignments that student completes in our case also what we say when we conduct uh, quizzes uh, we say that we will conduct so many quizzes but we will consider the marks out of the best so many performances so we may say best three out of four now if a student like that misses the first quiz also it doesn't matter the student can do the remaining three quizzes as long as the student does the end semester as far as we are concerned we evaluate every graded quiz on the marks that have been pre allocated and seen but with these marks the individual quiz marks if there are any long term submission assignment marks and the final exam so called marks all these will amount to 100 marks what we will do is we will offer information for each of your students uh, how much that student has scored in 100 marks and how much that student has scored in each of the quizzes and assignments now what weightage you want to decide you can divide the percentage etc so this is absolute grading we do announce some kind of a grading for students based on these 100 marks that is applied to the honor code certificate that is given by iit bombay x which has nothing to do with your so the same student who is getting your marks for your subject will also be getting a honor code grade from iit bombay x independent that will be independent that is not relative but that is on the slabs so we announce ahead that 40% let's say is the minimum passing grade so you will get a passing grade if you pass 40% then you'll get a c grade if you get between 40% and 55% b grade between this and this and a grade between this this is pre announced for every subject so again this is not this is relative only in terms of abc nomenclature but this is still absolute grade excuse me sir in terms of the students are only interested for participants so the total 140 students are there 
out of 140 50 students are interested for this can we go for that another yeah. seven yeah, absolutely. It's your it's your decision. It's absolutely your decision. In fact, somebody from Shastra University had asked this question last year. Nobody could come from them. They are going to participate here. They have confirmed it. What they had said is, they will say they will experiment this blended MOOCs with one batch of students. But that is entirely your decision. For us, suppose there are 140 students. Let us say 100 of them register for a MOOC course as an independent thing. Out of these 40 are those students whom you want to mentor through this blended MOOC scheme. As far as we are concerned, you send us a list of these 40 students. We are accountable to inform you the progress of these 40 students on the MOOC. So that is entirely your decision. Suppose end semester, in our college, end semester exam marks, end semester exam marks is 71 out of 100. So 70 percent is already gone, that's it. Now left over is 30 marks. For 30 marks, 10 marks with the assignment will be there and 20 marks for mid exam. So what uh, principal had said, that 20 marks mid exam will conduct as it is, 10 marks will give for MOOCs. 30 marks is already there. Okay. End semester exam. It's good that you raise this point. Now I would like to submit the following for your consideration. Yes, Please go back and examine why this 70 marks is for NSEM. You are an autonomous institution. Have you asked this question whether it is right to allocate 70 marks only for one three hour examination? Actually, sir, earlier it was 60 percent 60 end semester exam, but university afterwards objected. They sent later, no, no, you cannot give more than. You see the limitation of your autonomy then? That is the whole point. An autonomous. When, uh, when we introduce computer programming course based on the continuous work, our end semester was 20 percent weightage and in semester regular lecture was 80 percent weightage. Today every teacher in IIT Bombay can decide what should be the percentage weightage for which examination without going back to Senate, without going back to DNA. That is autonomy, sir. In fact, one of the endeavors of this consortium should be to enhance such autonomy in a meaningful and responsible way. One autonomy is I will not conduct any exam at all. <laughs> very, very nice. I have free time. Is 60 no, no, no. But, sir, I will only say this. Individual marking scheme is completely in the jurisdiction of the participating institution. Either IIT Bombay or the consortium can have no say in that. Now, from that what percentage you decide to allocate to MOOCs is again completely your decision. And the consortium will honor that because the consortium has nothing to say about it. After all, you are giving degrees to your students, you are giving uh, subject marks to your students. All that the consortium and on their behalf I will say this, that we desire is that there should be non-zero, non-trivial recognition of MOOCs marks. Now, what exactly is the quantum of non-trivial? What exactly is the quantum is in the first year has to be decided by every individual institution. For me, I will be happy if you say 2 percent of my 100 marks are recognized from. Although, let me tell you that when the consortium and the larger world knows that all other people are talking about 20, 30, 40 percent contribution and your institute is talking of 2 percent, you can imagine what they will think about your institute. So, in the beginning, a starting level, we can go for that. Uh, absolutely. Please feel completely free. This group is not meeting here to impose conditions on member constituent. This group is meeting here to enhance the independence of each constituent institution to do as they feel. Our main target is to blend these two mechanisms. In which way we will. So, you might start with a smaller percentage because the peculiar nature. Yes. But which is your university? No, JNTU uh, Kakinada University. So who is the vice chancellor of JNTU Kakinada? I will go personally and have a half an hour meeting with him. And I will tell him that this is an important experiment this institution is doing. Please permit them to do that. Who knows, he might agree. We have not tried this. See what happens is the university says 70 percent means we all blindly accept 70 percent. How many times in your college your uh, teachers have debated why should it be 70 percent? I can guarantee that there would be no debate. Actually, a starting one is 60 percent, sir. It does not matter. When they said 60 percent also, you did not debate. 
when they said 70 percent also you did not debate that is the problem with us is our problem anyway i digress yeah if we have mandate if we have vetage for this mock uh, that means each and every student is uh, in it is mandatory for each and every student to take the course assumption actually no there is an assumption as he said if then, if i decide to run if 40 students say they will they, they will I, I will register for 40 yeah. students. these 40 students will they get their grade in the course with the combination of MOOCs marks and your marks as you decide yeah the remaining will get their marks as per the normal course as per the normal it is perfectly possible what i am saying is neither i nor the consortium is saying what you do it however you are very right because then there could be comparison yeah, between yeah, the comparison students between and there could be a problem and yeah. I will tell you where the problem is. Yeah. If the students whose marks come from partially from MOOCs get better results Maybe. then other students will shout. Yeah. If there is greater failure in the students who get marks from MOOCs they say yeah, dhanna nahi yeah. it will I will tell you this will be the single criteria on will people which judge their relative mates. In fact going forward if my college generally has a passing percentage of 70 percent in a particular subject. If by introducing MOOCs, if that passing percentage improves to 75 percent, people will be very happy. If it reduces to 65 percent, you will face problems. Yeah. I am hinting at the possibility of saying that please ensure that the passing of the students does not change drastically because of the introduction of MOOCs. This could be a single detriment of acceptance in future years. But my suggestion is if we are introducing mock in our curriculum or credit weightage to curriculum, it should be mandatory for each and every student. Maybe it is 5 marks or 10 marks out of 30, I, but I, it should be I, mandatory. I entirely agree madam. Otherwise there no, no, one dispute. second. I entirely agree. Yeah. I have insisted exactly the same thing when we introduced here. Yeah. Many colleagues may do so. But this group cannot mandate that on every institution. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it is my personal suggestion. We yeah, have no, to no, I agree with you. We record that. Yeah. We'll make that as a recommendation. It is mandatory for each and every student. And otherwise, there will be dispute between the students. I agree. Mm -hmm. But we will never use the word, it is made mandatory by the consortium. Ji, ji. We will say, it is a recommendation of the consortium yeah. that it should be mandatory so for it all It should students. be recommended. Yeah. Thank you. But that so, is for, for them to take. So, yeah. so um, Kamal Bijlani, Amrita University. So, we had a short discussion with some of the teachers before I came. Huh. And one question that they have is that how will we synchronize the syllabus and the rate of the syllabus at which it is covered? So, for example, you have three exams or four exams. Internally, they will have exams. So, what is covered at what time should roughly sync so that the students are ready for the MOOC exams versus the we believe internal syllabus. So that yeah. synchronization and the time period, we have tried this before with some other MOOC and this has been a challenge. We am saying this from experience. Uh, yes. So that is the concern that Let we were told to bring way, to you. That the students who normally enroll for MOOCs also study that MOOCs portion independently depending upon how the MOOCs course develop. Many of them are already studying similar subjects elsewhere. Students have no problem in doing that by the way. The MOOCs course typically can continue at its own pace. You are not considering taking evaluation week by week or quiz by quiz. You are considering a total percentage of the evaluation of the entire MOOCs course to be factored in your grade. You can tell the students that by and large this is the sequence which is taught in the MOOCs and by and large we will try to maintain a similar sequence. If we have some different topics here and there, that may be changed. But please ensure that you give your MOOCs exams seriously because the total weightage for your marks here for this subject, this much percentage will come from MOOCs. That's all. That is the best we can do. However, additionally, when the T10KT workshop runs for each course, and remember I said we will try to run this workshop at least one week ahead of the beginning of the course. So even if in my institute the course is going to start later, my I am as a teacher I should participate in T10KT workshop right from the beginning. Now there people can request the concerned teachers that can they consider rescheduling of some topics etc. Et 
Now this matter is best discussed by individual teachers who are both experts and are going to teach that course and jointly with the teachers who are teaching that subject. One suggestion is that without losing much time, we can fix a schedule, let us say two weeks from now, where on a Saturday or on a Sunday, we will have the first hour and a half long meeting between all teachers teaching a subject and the teachers from here who are teaching that as the pre t 10 kt workshop discussion where I will ask my colleagues to formulate a series of questions that they would like answers of the participating teachers should upload those answers ahead of time and then we could have a meaningful discussion on the topics and sequence does that make sense now when would all the teachers be available in your institutions because I understand this might be a uh, vacation time okay let me put it this way since this first interaction which is pre t 10 kt workshop interaction we would like to start ahead of time okay ahead of time we would schedule it in the first week of july those teachers who are unable to join because they are not on the campus may be permitted to join using a view they can log in from wherever they are even from their homes that facility exists. Okay. If for some reason they cannot log in, we will maintain the entire recording of that interaction for each subject and we will make it immediately available for them to look at it independently and give a feedback. So, July 1st week is okay? Right. Okay. Sir, uh, as a continuation, sir, we, yeah. it would be very nice, sir, if the, how the course is going to be broken up and which pace like suppose you were able to tell us in two <coughs> weeks we will cover this and then the exam will be based on that. Okay. If that was told somewhat ahead of time, right. then we could try our best to synchronize accordingly. Right. An important point. So you will be happy to hear this. For each of the three courses, each of the three subjects that are being offered, the complete course including all 8 minute, 10 minute lecture recording, practice problems, and the quizzes that were conducted in the past is being made available within next five days. So the entire course which is primarily going to be that course which is going to be offered, the content will be available and accessible to you. They will be available and accessible on IIT Bombay X. So you can ask your teachers to register for that on the IIT Bombay X website. We will tell you which are the uh, because these courses may not, I have not discussed it with teachers, but we have decided that we will make this available. The entire course which is going to be taught is actually ready and is available. Now this we do not want to expose to other people. So we may make this course enrollment by invitation. So all that we will require is that the teachers from your side, you will have to, they have to register on IIT Bombay X and you will have to send officially that these are going to be the email IDs of teachers as known as IIT Bombay. We will by invitation enroll them for the corresponding courses and they will be able to see the entire course material. This we can do within the next 10 days so that between then and the July meet, they would have been able to see the entire sequence as it stands. The, is that? Uh, yeah, that is good sir. In addition, if uh, possible, at uh, some point, uh, if we could get a mapping between dates and the covering. So, that you know, I know that in July 25, this much will be covered, August th something, th that sort that of a rough timetable. The table. course structure that you will see is included with a weekly plan with the total number of weeks defined there. The current structure that we have planned is I think for thermodynamics course it is a 12 week course and for uh, the computer programming course it is a 10 week course and for uh, uh, signals and system there are two components of eight weeks uh, uh, six weeks each eight weeks each but how how do you expect 16 weeks of material to be covered in a 14 week semester in a uh, in a college huh? okay since uh, professor gadre is still running the second part on the global MOOCs will it be possible for you to give the following feedback that people desire that generally the coverage and the sequence of topics should have something matching with their own 
sequence of topics etc can i request for some help from your side as well for each of the three subjects if within the next 10 days you can interact with whoever are the teachers available and so on and send us the topics that are covered in the sequence in which they are covered that could be useful for our teachers as well so before the t10kt workshops begin we ourselves initiate some collaboration between these teachers you would send us yes. so you decide hmm. you can follow what the problem because Yeah, as it because we have to teach all these uh, uh, topics in which right, right. Okay. okay. No, so so my first answer was that what our teachers have decided, we will make available in the form of these courses. So even uh, Professor Gadre's course, we'll make those contents and sequence also available. I think we'll go back to that. We'll make these contents and sequence available. Ask your teachers to study that sequence, and as President suggests. that by and large we would expect participating teachers to adjust to that sequence because i cannot modify sequence for everybody's thing however if there is a major observation from some teachers saying that in our view in majority of our colleges we teach this topic first and this topic later i think our teachers will be glad to invert that is not a problem so i think you are saying the syllabus with that sequence only yeah yeah Yeah, the syllabus that has been sent is actually represents that sequence. One thing more, the prerequisite that is required. Should be. Yeah, because in each of the colleges, the syllabus are different. What the prerequisite required? Okay, okay, okay. I'll agree with that. We can match up with that. That starting of the you are telling us that the course will start prior to one week somewhere and uh, one week afterwards. Right. So we can have the prerequisite during those duration. Yes. The complete course will start with on the same day with all the colloquies. That is a very nice idea. What he is suggesting is that the main course should start and end identically for everyone, but we can define in terms of prerequisite material or pre-course material. Yeah. I think that is given here. Yeah. No, it is it is not there for each subject. Ha. Uh, but what we can do, taking this suggestion, I'll request all teachers that a prerequisite material. which may even be or 2 3 weeks duration yeah. that could be included and uh, people could do that that's a good idea then uh, the signals and systems goes for 12 weeks now. yes yeah but uh, it is it is 12 weeks 6 and 6 weeks for the two parts it is 16 weeks i think professor gadre will have to do a lot of soul searching on how if i am a constituent college of this consortium how i will teach a 16 week course in 14 weeks Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if the great professor Vikram Gadre takes 16 weeks, as an ordinary mortal, I will take 24 weeks to teach the same topic in my college. <laughs> so there will have to be some. Uh, Thank sir, you. Very much. Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, in my institution, there are around 14 sections in first year, and this computer programming uh, course is offered in odd semester as well as in even semester. Right. So what about the even semester? We will run the course in both semesters. We will run the course in both semesters. Same thing happens in IIT Bombay also. We have 500 students in first semester, 500 students in second semester. IIT Kharagpur runs for all thousand at a the time. There are multiple batches. But we will run the course in both semesters. Exactly similar thing. We will start in January and run it till April. And even if you have multiple teachers teaching different batches, as I said, we will cater to that. Uh, sir um, i would say that this activity of mock should be the icing on the cake generally if we see in the general uh, uh, say a teacher says i take 40 hours to cover the syllabus huh. is nonsense he should uncover the syllabus yeah, 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 yeah. correct correct so, correct so i would say that this will be a parallel activity yes. and it will be learning for the teacher also yes. by this so many activity you are, you are very right in fact we do believe that we ourselves when we started using mocks i tell you how much tremendous learning it has for us as per sridhar ayer said none of us were familiar with the important uh, pedagogy of active learning participative learning etc we have spent decades in improving our teaching now we are learning that we have to improve the learning of the students so is a is a new learning for us i agree with you all right. uh sir i have a, uh, we are uh, sir i have a question okay sir yeah, first you then you yeah If hundred students register for this blended MOOC, right, and uh, if few of the students, say forty students, want to get the verified certificate from IIT Bombay, so 
the 100 students will be doing only uh, assessment, uh, will be uh, graded based on 4 out of 8 quizzes or something. Mm. But parallelly, these uh, 40 students or 20 students will be completing the entire course for the 10 weeks duration, competing with the global learners. Mm. So can we have a parallel uh, overlap of this? Is that possible? Okay. Uh, first, let me clarify. Even your students who do the MOOCs are expected to complete the MOOCs. All the, yeah, all the quizzes. In fact, I would strongly suggest that don't tell them that you will take marks only of these quizzes for their internal assessment. You may do that eventually. Okay. It is your choice what percentage you will take and what portion you will take. But it is important that students do that MOOCs course completely. Then only they will get a composite flavor of what is happening online and what is happening. So if they complete su yeah, successfully, yeah, they, uh, whoever... I mean, uh, just like your course. For example, suppose there is a, so my issue decides 50% MOOC scores and 50% your syllabus. Passing percentage is 30%. How would you like if as your student I decide, Madam, I will not attend any of your uh, teaching. I will only do the MOOC thing, get 50% score and pass 30%. Okay. That is not correct. No? Yeah. So, I think it is important for us to emphasize that both these components are important. The percentage weightage may differ for my grade. But the importance is not diminishing. Right. Sir, yeah. uh, I have one session. If if all these MOOC courses are pre-recorded, and if we decide that these uh, courses will be of 10 week or 12 week, which is a standardized, and if the freedom is given to every institution, they can start the course whenever they want, and uh, they will uh, spend that 10 hour, uh, 10 weeks uh, for that full course or 12 weeks for that course. Uh, and uh, uh, they can request to your uh, uh, administration that they want to have the uh, test or quiz. Uh, after uh, uh, every model, there will be one quiz which can be organized and we will take that particular quizzes and we will grade at our end. So it is going to become completely free to all the people to register for this course. What is the problem in asking that the everybody should start at the particular no, date and end? There is, there is no problem. Date. For your information, two of these three subjects on the global EDX platform for global learners are running or will start running in what we call self-paced mode. So, Professor Gaitonde's thermodynamics and our computer programming part one will be running in self-paced mode. In that self-paced mode, the entire material for the entire course is made available on day one. The end duration is one year. The quizzes are also announced, graded quizzes. The participant can take any quiz at any point in time. The day the participant completes all quizzes and ends them examination, that person becomes due for an honor course certificate. That is the freedom available. Now, a student may do the entire course in two weeks or a student may do that course in one year. On MOOCs, there is no such thing as a sequence and a semester and thing like that. Most MOOCs are defined to follow six week, eight week kind of duration because that has been the tradition. And we are hamstrung by our semester system. Therefore, we are forced to bring an alignment between that sequence and this sequence. Otherwise, for MOOCs, there is no such requirement. If, if, if the requirement is of not like that, then my semester starts from 1st of August. So, I will start the MOOC course at my institution on the 1st of August. And I will try to spend that 12 hours of the uh, 12 weeks of that with my student. And according to that, we the will. The problem have to is if the MOOC course is announced by IIT Bombay from 1st of July, and if we want the graded quizzes to be synchronized amongst our participants, then that will not happen for 1st of August students. By 1st of August, the other students who have enrolled might have done four weeks of uh, courses. What I said, self-paced course on MOOCs is a separate phenomena. The three subjects that are going to be offered as blended MOOCs are not running as self-paced courses. They are running at paced courses, which are paced as per the convenience of the participating institution. I think this management, this will become difficult because every institution will be starting the start of the semester, end of the semester is different. So if you uh, if as per the request, uh, after the completion of the module... It is not possible for IIT Bombay or any institution to have different start date and end date for a MOOC course. That is not possible at all. The MOOC offering has to run from a date defined to a date defined. 
we can all debate and discuss and arrive at a common date which is useful but running that is like running different courses so i have to run 10 versions of that mooks here physically one mook starting the same mook starting two weeks later the same mook starting three weeks later because that is what the students will register and see and there will be a whole lot of confusion because the site does not debar a student from enrolling for any course so if a course for your institute is starting in august but a smart student sees that that course is already offered in july i'll register for that course and i will know in advance whatever is going to happen in the august course i will tell you it will cause more confusion please understand okay so best way to imagine is mooks is like a course running for all students as per some time table and for each of our institutions we have our course and the mooks course run and these two we need to synchronize the the mooks course is not being specially tailored for every participating institute instead we are trying to tailor it for all institutions combined that is the limitation so this will be the limitation under which the mooks can be offered yeah sir we follow outcome based education in the assessment pattern we give weightage to remember understand and apply Every quiz that we conduct and every question in that quiz actually requires you to remember, understand, and apply. Otherwise, you cannot solve that quiz problem. All our evaluation is based on on uh, on this kind of assessment only. So there is no special need for infrastructure. the only infrastructure that is required is the avu infrastructure for the t10kt workshop we had asked the question that when the t10kt interaction happens whether you would like your students also to be present there to benefit from the discussion many have said yes many have said select student etc the infrastructure that is required is very good bandwidth in fact at mogera we have a problem there on on the piece of paper you have a very large bandwidth but the operational continuous bandwidth is lacking so you might want to request uh, agartala municipal corporation or whatever it is to lay a special link or something now there is only one important point about the infrastructure that he mentioned in case a participating institution wishes to supervise an online quiz it is entirely possible to do so our quizzes are open in the evening on sunday some day and they are kept open for 48 hours 